Ready? How's everybody this morning? Yeah. Amen. Is Jesus on the throne? Yeah. I'm going to ask you one more time. I said, is Jesus on the throne? Yeah. That's right. That's right. As long as Jesus is on the throne, then I think everything is going to be all right. Yeah. Well, welcome to, uh, to Youth Sunday. This is our five service today. And uh, we have, of course, been blessed just by the degree all service. And today we're going to hear uh, from uh, one of our newest uh, staff members, uh, today, he is, has been here at Faith Christian Center for eight years, has been uh, married for six years to uh, LaRama, and uh, is the father of two, uh, Dre and Nehemiah, and uh, has served in FCC worship for eight years. So do me a favor, and uh, let's give a warm Faith Christian Center welcome today to Minister Jeremy Sullivan. Good morning, family. You guys can have a seat. So first and foremost, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge our pastors, Pastor Sean and Erica Moore. Don't we have the best pastors on the planet? Yeah. Appreciate the opportunity to share the platform. I'm uh, blessed to be up here and blessed to share a word with y'all today. Amen? Amen. Also, I want to take a moment to honor my beautiful, bodacious babe of a wife sitting in the front row, Miss Larama Sullivan. Go ahead and give a bow, babe. Give a bow. Looking fly as always. Also, want to take a moment to uh, honor my my two sons, Keandre and Nehemiah, who will be here later, but. In their absence, we honor them. Amen. Amen. Also, of course, I want to take a moment to honor my co-workers that work with me here at FCC. FCC staff is the best staff on earth. That's what helps makes this place run. It's the reason why all of us are here. Amen. Amen. And then, of course, you know I got to shout out the degree. My mentors, my difference makers. Y'all ready to turn up today? That's what I'm talking about, man. From day one, the support that they have shown me over there is incredible. I just appreciate you guys, your encouragement. And uh, hey, we're doing what we do every Sunday. We turn up, amen? We just get to spread the turn up to the main sanctuary this week. All right? And then last but not least, I want to make sure to honor my Faith Christian Center family. I love y'all, man. Give it up for yourselves, 212. Man, you guys don't understand how much of an influence this place has had on my life. I rededicated my life to Christ here. I got filled with the Holy Spirit here. I got my prayer language here. I met my wife here. We built a family here. Businesses were birthed out of this place. I learned how to worship here. Lifelong friendships were formed here. I found my mentors here. I found mentees here. I found brothers and sisters for life here. This is a place where good things happen, where God things happen. It is good ground at FCC. Amen? Amen. Well, you guys are probably wondering why I'm dressed like this and why I have all these cool decorations up here, right? Well, let me tell you why. Go ahead and hit that, Abraham. Hey. Now this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down, and I'd like to take a minute, sit there real nice, I'll tell you how I became a believer in my Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, hey. Come on. I grew up in the church, y'all, born and raised. In the hymnal is where I spend most of my days. Chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool and all. Learning about the Bible up in Sunday school when the enemy came. He was up to no good. 
Started making trouble in my neighborhood. I fell in one little sin and my mom got scared. She said I need you to go on up to the altar for prayer. I made my way up and when I came near, a minister was there. He told me, son, come here. There's only one way to transform how you behave. Let's say the sinner's prayer, kid. It's time to be saved. I rededicated my life about seven or eight times. He's faithful, that's why I'm up here kicking these rhymes. I live in his kingdom, now I'm finally there to sit on my throne as a priest in the Hey, hey, hey. Come on, come on. Hey, 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 hey. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. God is good, right? God is good, right? Amen. That's just uh, my testimony in a nutshell, let's say. So, how many of y'all have never heard the Fresh Prince song ever in your life? That's what I'm talking about. Everybody knows that song, right? One cool thing, though, is a lot of people think that uh, the Fresh Prince show launched... Uh, the Fresh Prince's musical career, but it was actually the other way around. His musical career actually gave him the avenue to create the show. Before the show ever existed, before Will Smith was getting jiggy with it, before he had any of us singing, summer, summer, summer time. <laughs> before all of that, back in 1988, he dropped an album called He Is The DJ and I Am The Rapper. There's a particular song on that album that won the very first ever rap Grammy. And that song was called, Parents Just Don't Understand. And that is the message I'm going to deliver today. That's the title of my word, is Parents Just Don't Understand. And to attach to that word, I want you to write down 1 Corinthians 14 and 20. And we'll get there in a moment, but just make sure to write it down. So let's open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this opportunity to meet in this house of worship, God. Thank you that you met us here during praise and worship, God. Thank you that your presence didn't exit the room just because the music stopped. We ushered your presence in, and you are here right now, God. We thank you that because you woke every single person up here this morning and every single person watching online, your purpose for us is not complete. You still have more that you want to do in our lives. So thank you, God, that we are here and we trust and believe that you have a word for each and every one of us, God. So I pray that the word that is brought forth lands in fertile soil, God, in the fertile soil of our hearts, that it is able to yield 30, 60, or even 100 times for your kingdom, God. And we will give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen, amen. amen. So, parents just don't understand. So, in the first verse of this song, the Fresh Prince talks about how his mom was taking him shopping to get some clothes. And all the clothes that she was picking out for him were like 10, 15, 20 years old. Really, really outdated wardrobe, right? And he's like, Ma, you cannot get these clothes for me. Because if you get these clothes for me, the classmates of mine are going to clown me. You cannot allow me to go to school like this. So he's like trying to reason with his mom, right? It's like the double pleated pants, please just don't, just don't, just don't. But, of course, mom is like, you're getting what I tell you you're going to get. And that's what you're getting. So mom gets him the clothes. He goes to school. And, of course, he gets clowned, right? And so at the end of the first verse, he says, so to you, all the kids all across the land, there's no need to argue. Parents just don't understand. Amen? So I want to put a subheading on that. And that subheading is, parents just don't understand, or so we thought. So I like to break down music. You guys mind if we break this song down a little bit? Can you say, can you say let's break it down? Let's break it down. Amen. So let's go back to that first verse there, right? So from the Fresh Prince's perspective, his mom just didn't get it, right? He's like, you can't send me to school in these outdated clothes. But let's think about it from mom's perspective real quick. Amen? Amen. So if they're at the store... And they're picking out clothes that are probably 10, 15, 20 years old. Where do you think they're at? Thrift store. Thrift store, right. 
And what is a potential reason why they might be there? Maybe mom just ain't got it like that to get him all the fresh gear that he wants, right? So we have to be careful on, on how we look at things. Because from Fresh Prince's perspective, he's like, yo, I want this stuff. You're not getting me this stuff, so therefore you're not listening to me. But from mom's perspective, mom is saying, I'm doing what is within my power to do. I am still providing for you even if what you want isn't what you're getting. I am still providing and doing my job as a parent to provide. The second verse of the song goes a little bit different. The second verse, my man decides to steal, well, we'll, we'll say commandeer. He decides to commandeer his parents' Porsche. And so he goes for a joyride, right? Of course, the parents made the rule. They were out of town. They said, don't touch the car. You would think, you know, they would have seen, he would have seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off and would have known that's probably just a bad idea to do that, right? Anyway, he steals the car, goes on a joyride, gets in a whole bunch of trouble, and then the, his parents have to come and bail him out, right? But then my man Fresh Prince at the end of the song still has the nerve to say, parents just don't understand. Or so we thought. Amen. So when we were younger, the way we behaved, the way we thought, the way that we process information made complete sense to us because we existed in our frame of reality. It was based on our limited perspective and experience up to that point, right? So we thought our parents didn't understand, but really they understood more than we realized. We just didn't have the level of maturity to understand where they were coming from and the decisions that they were making. Amen. So children lack perspective and experience compared to their adult counterparts. And children, in their limited understanding, can tend to frustrate us as parents from time to time. Would anybody agree with that? Yes. Amen. So dare I say that as children are to adults, sometimes we are to God. What do I mean by that? Ever think about how much we, in our limited perspective and experience, must frustrate God? Because where we lack perspective, God is omnipotent. He is omniscient and he is omnipresent, right? Where we lack experience, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is timeless. So think about how frustrating it must be sometimes. You probably don't have to think too hard about it because I'm sure all of us at some point have been frustrated by the decisions of a child, right? Amen. So let's open up 1 Corinthians 14 and 20, as I mentioned in the Amplified. It says, brothers and sisters, do not be children, immature, childlike in your thinking. Be infants in matters of evil, completely innocent and inexperienced. But in your minds, be mature adults. So look at your neighbor and say, we're going to do some growing up today. <laughs> amen, amen. Parents just don't understand, or so we thought. So as I look at everybody in the room, there's a lot of different blends of color, a lot of different ages, a lot of different backgrounds. A lot of us come from different places. But a lot of us actually probably have more in common than we think. For example, I bet that for every single person in this room, our parents, our guardians, the people that took care of us, probably said a lot of the same things to all of us. So I want to play a game. Can we play a game today, guys? All right, we're going to play a game. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some acronyms on the screen. So each letter represents a word, and we got to try to figure out what those acronyms represent, okay? So let's throw the first one up there. So this one right here is when a kid does something that makes absolutely no sense. Why? Why would you do that? Right? That's the question. That has been asked to us when we were that kid. And that's the question that we ask the kids when we see kids wilding out. So my four-year-old, <laughs> my four-year-old. So we were out at uh, dinner the other day. And we were getting ready to pack up and leave. My son had ordered some chicken tenders and some fries with a cup of ranch dressing. As we're getting ready to leave, he decides he's going to take his hand and just submerge it in the ranch dressing. Not just fingertips, not just a little, no, full hand in the ranch dressing. And so my wife and I look at him and we're like, Nehemiah, why would you do that? 
from his perspective, he's just like, huh, this mystery white substance, I want to see how it feels. What's the temperature? What's the, you know, what's the viscosity? What's the thickness of this? Like, you know, how does this feel? What, is, how, what does that feel like when, it, when, it, when my hand touches it? What does it look like when my hand is completely, it's not skin color anymore, it's just white. Like, what does that, you know, that's how kids think. It's just out of, out of pure curiosity. I just want to know, not thinking of the ramifications of what they do. But us as parents, we don't look at it from the curiosity perspective. We look at it as, okay, you made this, now we have to take time to clean up this mess. Amen? So let's look at Psalms 24, 3 and 4. It says, Who may ascend to the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He who has what? Uh-oh. And a pure heart. There are places that God may want to take us now, but we are busy getting our hands dirty. So now we're delaying the process. Because before God can take us there, he has to clean us up. Amen? So for those of us who are in that place, I just want to say a little short mini prayer. Lord, give us the discipline to respond to your instruction that we may keep our hands clean and be ready to move when you tell us to. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You want another one? All right, let's do another one. So this is what happens when you want something from the, from the restaurant, you want to go through the drive-thru. What's the response? You got McDonald's money? Or what's, or what's the second one? What's the second one? We got McDonald's at home. Right? We've all heard that. So we, in our childlike mind state, we're like, we want a cheeseburger from McDonald's. But from the parents' mindset, from the parents' mindset, they're thinking, you don't necessarily want a cheeseburger from McDonald's. You just want a ground beef patty with a slice of cheese and two pieces of bread. Right? We got that at the crib. We don't have to go to McDonald's for that. Right? And there could be a number of reasons as to why you want to justify saying that. One could be, uh, we got the, we just spent money on groceries. Why are we going to spend money at the restaurant when we got it at the crib? But another way of looking at it, too, is we as children are asking for this cheeseburger from McDonald's. I don't think anybody in here really knows what's in that hamburger. Right? It's a mystery meat. But we know that if we make it at home... We're going to make it out of, out of ground beef. We know that it's 100% ground beef because we took it out the fridge and we cooked it. Amen? So maybe it's not even necessarily about the money. Maybe it's, um, I'm not going to give you that McDonald's because I have something better for you. Y'all follow me? Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So sometimes we... In our childlike mind state, as adults, towards God, can be like, God, I want this McDonald's cheeseburger. And God's like, bro, you are aiming way, way, way too low. You set the standard way too low. You're out here talking about you want some McDonald's. I'm trying to give you that USDA prime beef. I'm trying to give you that high quality, that top notch. How many of y'all ever had way goo beef before? Way goo. I never had it, but I heard. Is it as good as people say it is? That's what I'm saying. See, that's that, that's that Ephesians 3.20 right there. That's that exceedingly and abundantly, right? You out here trying to get this McDonald's. Not only am I trying to serve you USDA Prime, but I'm really trying to give you that way goo. But you don't even know to ask for it. All you want is that thing that you think tastes good, but it's probably not really that good for you. Amen? You guys want another one? They're going to get harder as we go, so get ready. This one's a little longer. Let's see it. So this one here. I hear, I hear whispers already. People are getting in it already. So this one here is when your child is acting out in public. You better sit down and act like you got some sense. That's right. Don't get a whooping in the middle of this store. That's your one warning. Sometimes it ain't even no warning, but anyway. 
So that's what the parent says, right? But what they really mean is you're making me look bad. You're embarrassing me. You're being a distraction. I raised you better than that, right? And what we're also thinking as parents when we say that is, that's my kid. So their behavior is a reflection of my character. Whatever they do falls back on me because I claim them and they claim me, amen? So we're supposed to be representing Jesus and changing the way people see church. So we can't be out here acting a fool in public, y'all. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's look at uh, 1 Peter 2 and, 9, 2 and 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. Yeah. So my prayer on this bullet point is very, very short. It's just help us sit down and act like we got some sense, Lord. <laughs> That's all we're asking. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You guys want another one? Yeah. Let's keep it rolling. Let's do another one. Okay. So this one right here is a little bit, this one right here is a little bit tougher. So this one right here is when you have that one friend who uh, operates in bad character. And your, your parents see things in them that you don't necessarily see. Eight o'clock had trouble with this one too, so you're not, you're, you're, not, uh, you're not alone on this. So this one is, you shouldn't hang out with them. They're a bad influence. So one thing I enjoy doing when I'm up here is telling on myself. I feel like transparency breeds transformation, amen? amen? Amen. So when I was a junior in high school, I had a friend who was a very bad influence. I didn't see it just because he stretched me out of my comfort zone. I had a lot of fun. I felt more confident when I was around him. But my mom, who never ever previously before that ever told me not to hang around with somebody. And you would have thought that I would have, and once again, this is the adult looking back, like I should have realized that she was probably on point with this, right? But me, in my childlike mind state, I was like, "Ma, you're tripping. You just don't want me to have fun and whatever, right? So that's what I thought until one day my mom had to pick me up from jail. <laughs> because I was kicking it with the homie, and we got in some trouble. Proverbs 31 and 10 says, bad company corrupts good morals. So I don't feel like that's just for us in our childhood years. I feel like God is saying that to some of us right now. You shouldn't hang out with them. They're a bad influence. And that's a tough word, right? Because our people are our people. But that can still be your people at a distance. Because you may be in a season in your life right now where God is trying to grow some things in you. And you hanging around with that person might stunt your growth. So God may be saying, for this season, create some distance. Create some separation. Because I need you to grow, and you can't grow in the presence of that individual. They may not even be a bad person. It just may be they have some characteristics that don't line up with the season that you're in and where God is trying to take you. Amen? Proverbs 18 and 24 says, some friends are fun to be with, but a true friend can be better than a brother. So a little short prayer here. Lord Jesus, help us to create the distance from the people that you want us to create the distance from. And I pray, Lord God, that as we move that space out and we clear that space out, that you fill us with your presence, God. Let you and greater friendship with you take the place of those relationships that we have to distance. And also at the same time, bring new people into those spaces, God. Bring new people, kingdom people into those spaces that are going to help push us in to the purpose that you have for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I got a couple more. Y'all still with me? Yeah. All right, let's do another one. This one's a little bit easier. Who said that? Say it again. That's right. Because I said so, that's why. 
When I was growing up, my mom used to say, because I'm the mom, and I waited a long time to be the mom. So until you're a parent, you can make the decisions on your own. But for right now, I'm the mom, so I make the decisions. Okay, mom. You waited a long time, I'm gonna let you have it, that's fine. Because I said so, that's why. Now this one right here, I have to be honest, I have a tough time with this one a little bit. Because I like to know things. I just like to know things. My wife will tell you, one of my biggest pet peeves is just not being in the know. I don't like to be in rooms where I don't know what's going on. I don't like to be in conversations where I don't know what's going on. I don't like to like feel a weird energy and not know what's going on. Like I try to get something out of somebody and I can tell something's off, but they're not telling me what's going on. I'm bothered by that, right? I just like to know things. So being told by God when I ask him a question because I said so, that's why, I feel like it's just not an appropriate response. Like I need, I need more than that. Anybody else? Yeah. Amen. So a lot of times the reason why God doesn't give us more is the same thing that our parents used to tell us. You don't need to know the answer to that right now. That's beyond your pay grade, right? Like that's, that is beyond your level of comprehension. I'm making decisions right now on your behalf that are going to benefit you, but you don't have the maturity to even understand the decisions that I'm making right now. So instead of diving too deep and trying to give pearls to a baby, right? I'm, I'm, instead, I'm going to just tell you this is what it is until you get older and you'll understand the decision that I've made. But for now, it's just because I said so, right? And sometimes that's how it can be with God too. Like look at Matthew 28 and 18. As Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and the earth. So sometimes we just have to be okay with not getting more from God than because I said so. There's a certain level of trust that has to come with that, right? We have to trust and believe that because God told us something, that we don't need a further explanation at this point. Later on in life, maybe we'll know, maybe we won't. But the point is, is that thank you, God, that you love me enough to speak to me and tell me something that I can even have the audacity to ask the question why. Right? Amen. Amen. God, give us the peace to be okay with not having all the details right now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You guys, I was having so much fun with these acronyms that I just, I just decided to throw one more in there for good measure. Can we do one more? Yeah. I don't even have like a big revelatory breakdown on this one. I just like this one, so I'm going to go with this one. So this one is a nice, nice long one too. Wow. 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 If everyone jumped off a bridge, would you do it? If everyone else jumped off a bridge, would you do it? I just love this. Like, if you, if you look for a revelation, God will give it to you anywhere. I was like, God, what is, where are we going with this? Because he, 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 he told me this. And I was like, well, what, how does that tie into anything? He said, Romans 12 and 2. Do not be conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may know what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Right? So if everybody else jumps off a bridge, we're not going to be conformed to the world. We're going to live by a kingdom standard. The only standard that matters. Amen? Amen. 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 So say this with me again. Parents just don't understand. Parents just don't understand. Or so we thought. So one of the greatest scientific arguments to come out of parenting is nature versus nurture. I just want to sit on that for a second. So from a scientific perspective, nature refers to the biological or genetic predispositions that impact one's human's traits, physical, emotional, and intellectual. Nurture, in contrast, describes the influence of learning and or environmental factors on these traits. So let's look at nature for a second. Children have inherent traits of their parents passed down through their genetics. You see that oftentimes with like athletes, musicians, doctors, right? Like there's literally generations. You ever see those like generations, like everybody is just a ridiculous athlete for no reason, just because of their genetics, right? Or everybody can sing like a bluebird, just by no formal training, you just, you just got it, right? Because, because of genetics. One of the things I learned is that one in five medical students have a parent who is a doctor. 
I have a buddy who works in sales who is just a monster salesman. I worked with him in sales for years. And his dad was a really, really successful salesman. His brother's a really, really successful salesman. It's just in his DNA. And so I would frustrate myself because I would try to operate in the way that he was doing things, not realizing it didn't come to me as easy because it wasn't in my blood. Say this with me. It's in your blood. Genesis 1, 26 and 27 says, Then God said, let us make man in our image. It's in our blood. Amen? Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So guess what? Whatever it is that God wants us to do, and we're questioning whether or not we can do it, it's in our blood. That spiritual DNA is in us. God has already put in us. We are created in his image. We are created in his image. The perfect eternal God created us. So if the perfect eternal God created us in his image, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So I don't know how I'm going to pay this bill. I don't know how I'm going to get over this hurdle. I don't know how I'm going to move past this heartbreak. I don't know how I'm going to get over this frustration. I don't know how I'm going to reach my goals. It's in our blood. Amen? Yeah. Or how about this one in genetics, when it comes to genetics? Sometimes you hear a mom say this when their son does something that uh, rubs her the wrong way. She'll say, you are just like your father. <laughs> Yee. That's a tough one sometimes, right? But I don't know about y'all, but I want when people see me and see my behavior and my character to look at me and say, you are just like your father. That's what we want, right? We want people, when they see us, when they see our character, when they see that we live our lives and conduct ourselves, we want them to say, you are just like your father in heaven. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's take a minute to look at nurture just for a second. So children have learned traits from their parents and from others that are passed down through observation. Children learn how to speak by mimicking what they hear, right? They learn how to behave by mimicking what they see. We learn how to do both by mimicking Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the example that you set for us here on this earth. Amen? John 14 and 12 says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works. Y'all ever heard that verse before? He said, you will do the things. Jesus said this. You will do the things that I have done on this earth and even greater works. You're telling me that we can do greater works than causing the lame to walk? We can do greater works than causing the dead to rise? We can do greater works than causing the sick to be healed? We can do greater works, y'all, because of the power of Christ in us. Christ on this earth was one person walking the earth. When he went transformed into the next life, he left us with Holy Spirit. Now he's everywhere we are. And that is why we can do more than he did. Because instead of there just being one Jesus, we're all Jesus. Amen? So I want to switch gears to a new subheading. And this subheading is parents just don't understand but I'm glad God does. Come on. Amen. Come on. Say that with me. Say, parents just don't understand. Just don't understand. But I'm glad, God does. I'm glad God does. So, once again, I'm going to tell them myself. As I get older, I feel like sometimes I forget what it was like to be a kid. I have a son who is 19 years old. And as he grows into maturity... There's been times where my wife has had to pull me to the side and be like, dude, he doesn't know that. But I just expect him to know that because of where I'm at in my life. The thing that he is still learning has almost become second nature to me because I have 20 years of existence on him. But in my parental mind, I'm not even thinking that. I'm thinking, where is his 
responsibility at. You know, like he should know these things, but in all reality, he doesn't. And so I have to give him grace to learn these things along the way. Amen. <laughs> have you guys ever seen, you know, we're in the, we're in the 90s theme, right? Have you guys ever seen the movie Hook with Robin Williams and Dustin Hoffman? You know Rotten Tomatoes gave that movie like a 67%? What is wrong with them? That's like a, one of the greatest, that's like up there with a the Sandlot. That's like one of the greatest movies ever. Hook is, hook, hook, bro. Rufio, Rufio, Rufio. Come on now. So in that movie, you see Peter Pan, who is a grown-up adult, right? He's a grown man, grown man Peter Pan. And Captain Hook comes back and abducts his kids and brings them back to Never Neverland. And then Tinkerbell comes and grabs grown-up Peter Pan to bring him back to Never Neverland to have one more battle with the infamous Captain James Hook and get his family back, right? So Peter Pan comes back to Never Neverland, the place where Peter Pan was king. Peter Pan ruled Never Neverland. And he comes back, he doesn't remember anything, nothing. All the lost boys are like, this ain't Peter Pan. Where's, where's, where's my OG Peter Pan? Where's the, where's, where's the gangster Peter Pan that I used to know out here cutting pirates? Flying through the air. Oh, 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 where is the Peter Pan I know, right? And so what he had to do is he had to immerse himself back in that culture. He had to spend a lot of time with those kids. So then he began to understand and remember what it was like to be a kid. Parents can be out of touch. Sometimes we just don't spend enough time in their world. Adults can be out of touch. Sometimes we just don't spend enough time in their world. But aren't you guys glad that our God doesn't think of us like that? Let's look at Hebrews 4 and 15. It says, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling with our weaknesses and infirmities and liability to the assaults of temptation. But one who was, I'm sorry, but one who has been tempted in every respect as we are, yet without sinning. Y'all, God understands everything that we're going through, that we've been through, every sin, every temptation. God understands it all. And not because he is an omnipresent, omnipotent, and what's the other one? Omniscient God. Well, that, that's one of the reasons, but also because he actually came to earth wrapped in flesh, suffered like a normal human being, came and experienced life. He came in in humble beginnings, right? Pregnant mother out of wedlock, low-income household, working a trade, right? God said... And here's the thing. I don't even think necessarily that God had to do this because God knows everything, right? I feel like God did this. One of the reasons why he did this is because he said, I want my people to know that they know that they know that I've been here. I've seen it. I've experienced it all. And there is no temptation under the sun except that which is common to man. But if I can come to this earth and live a perfect life then that just goes to show that being tempted in every way I live the perfect life, that just goes to show that the scripture is true, that for every temptation he provides a way out. Amen? Amen. And when he hung on that cross, y'all, when he hung on that cross, he said, why have you forsaken me? He came and lived a sinless, perfect life. Why would he say that? It's because at that moment when he was dying on the cross, he bore the sin of every single person that would ever live. Can you imagine being 100% God and 100% man? Nobody has that connection with God like Jesus does. And in a second, he is separated from God. He has never felt that separation in his entire life. And now he's bearing the sin of everybody all at once. He did that for us. Because he never wants us to think, my parent doesn't understand. Amen? Yeah. 
So I just want to take a moment right now with every head bowed, with every eye closed, to just do an inventory. Ask God to search your heart, to examine your thoughts, and have him show you how you have had this mindset that God just doesn't understand. He doesn't understand what I'm going through. He doesn't understand what I'm up against. He doesn't understand the sacrifice that he's asking me to make. He doesn't understand the gravity of the things that he is asking me to do. He doesn't understand that I need more information. He doesn't understand that there are things that I want. He doesn't understand that I just want to kick it with my people. He doesn't understand that I just want to go out and have a good time and I can still come back to him. He doesn't understand that there are some things that are done in the world, some music I listen to, some things that I watch, some people I entertain that don't line up with what he says, but I like those things. He just doesn't understand that. If any of us feel that way, we just want to take a moment and acknowledge and take a leap of faith right now because we walk by faith and not by sight, right? So even if we are having troubles believing it at this point, we want to take a moment to acknowledge that God does understand us. So if you feel like God just doesn't understand me in any way, shape, or form, if anything ministered to you in regards to what I was saying, I just want you to put your hand in the air for me right now. Or if you're thinking, God, I don't understand. What are you doing right now? I don't understand why I'm in the situation that I'm in. I don't understand it. Just stick your hand in the air. I'm not going to ask you to come up here. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm not going to ask you to come up here. It's just acknowledging, God, I'm acknowledging that we have some work to do. Amen. I see those hands. So I just want to take a moment to pray over you guys. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. We thank you for the declaration that was made today by those hands going up. That we trust you, Lord. We trust you, God. We trust you. I pray that you will open up our ears of understanding, God. If there's a message you're trying to communicate to us that we are not letting through, I pray that you will open up our eyes of understanding, that we may receive that message and know what our next move is, God. I pray that if you told us to stay put, God, if you said, this is all I'm giving you for right now, that you will let us be content with that because we know it came from you. And anything you instruct us to do, God, you are going to provide for us along the way. We thank you, God. We trust you. We trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So I don't want to take the time to skip this. Um, if you guys could with every head bow and every eye closed. If you guys came in here today, if any of us came in here today, just thinking, man, God, I was good with you at one point. But you and I just are not as close as we used to be. I've gotten back into some old habits, some old mindsets, some ideologies that don't align with you. And I need to get back right with you. Or if you came to church today and you don't even actually have a relationship yet with the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're saying, I, how can, I can't even say that my parent doesn't understand me because I don't even acknowledge you as my parent. If that's you today, God the Father is calling you out and saying, son, daughter, 
Now is your moment. So if you need to rededicate your life, or if you need to dedicate your life to God for the first time, every head bowed, every eye closed, just raise your hand for me. Amen. I see those hands. I see those hands. Don't miss this opportunity. Don't think your parent doesn't understand. That little whisper, that little nudge you're getting, that's God. Answer that. Answer that. Stick your hand up. That's all you got to do by faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. All right, you guys can put your hands down. I'm going to lead this in a prayer. You guys can say this with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the Son of God. You came to earth and died for us that we may be made new. We thank you, God, that you rose on the third day with all power in your hand. So we thank you, God, for your sacrifice. And we receive your salvation in the name of Jesus. Amen. God, we thank you for the people who made decisions today to level up in their walk with you, God. I pray that you will place people in their corner that will help them level up, God. I pray for peers. I pray for mentors, Lord. I pray for community. Thank you, God, that you are taking us all from glory to glory. And thank you for that next step that we took today. In Jesus' name, amen. Say this with me one more time, guys. Parents just don't understand, but I'm glad God does. Hallelujah. Just a couple of announcements before we go. Uh, for our newcomers, please visit the guest experience tent on your way out today to have some light refreshments, some snacks, get to meet some of our volunteers here. Also, At The Movies is going down next week, so make sure you guys come back. We are also doing At The Movies in the degree as well. So the same movies that are uh, broadcast over here will be broadcast in the, in the degree youth building as well. So when you guys leave service, you and your kids will have some, uh, some conversations to be able to be had regarding the same content. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, and also there will be ministers up front to pray for you if anybody needs it. I just want to take a moment before we close. Come on, this was, uh, this was one of his first times as minister. He did it at the 8 o'clock. Did it at, at the 10 o'clock. And he's got one more coming up at the 12. Come on, give it up for him. Man, preaching three times on a Sunday is not as easy as everybody might think it is. And I just want to affirm you, man. Just super proud of you. I know how much time and preparation obviously went into today. You have a great team of people behind you uh, who have done an outstanding job with the service as well. And the only thing that you're going to do is grow and go up. Amen. So we celebrate him. Thank you all so much for coming out today. We love you all with the love of the Lord. We'll see you next time.